Hi everybody, Carolyn Parrish at FWC. First of all, I apologize for the technical difficulties we were experiencing on our Facebook Live a few minutes ago. I think we have it handled now, so we're gonna get right back to what we were talking about, which is spring break and all the great activities that are available to you out on the water and how you can recreate and be safe. So I am in beautiful Northeast Florida. I'll get to that location here in just a moment, but it's great weather outside. Sun is shining, skies are blue. And as you can see in the distance, people are out enjoying themselves on the water. So I am on board today with law enforcement. So I would like to introduce you to the staff that is assisting me today. We have a captain and a co-captain and some other people that are assisting us. So, sir, hello there. What's your name? Uh, Officer Chad Weber. Officer Chad Weber. And our captain for the day, sir, your name? Senior Officer Kurt Harris. Senior Officer Kurt Harris, thank you so much for accommodating myself and staff today on the boat. I'm gonna let these PWCs, or more commonly known as jet skis, pass us in the distance so we can let them pass us so they are not disruptive to any of our audio here. Just taking a look. All right, ladies, sorry for the in interruption in your intro, but I'm coming back to you. Hi, what's your name? Shannon Knowles, I'm with the Division of Law Enforcement. Hi, Shannon, and last but not least. Kennedy Monroe, I'm the Communications Intern. Hi, Kennedy. Thanks, Shannon and Kennedy, for coming on board today with us in law enforcement as we talk about everything, boating safety, and more. So I'm going to maneuver myself onto the boat and ask Officer Weber to come to the front along with Shannon and Kennedy. And we're gonna get right away started talking about life jackets. So Officer Weber, I'm gonna turn this over to you as the subject matter expert and tell us what type of life jacket Shannon has on today. Shannon is wearing a uh, type five inflatable life jacket it's a manual inflatable because it states it right here so, let me zoom in there where does it state it right here okay Maybe. perfect thank you so in the event of an emergency if she were to fall into the water she would pull that tab and it would inflate and keep her afloat sounds good so that's one option and it's a fanny pack style uh those of you who are like me uh Back in the day, fanny packs were pretty popular. So this is just an attempt by, you know, the industry to really make life jackets wearable, comfortable, and accessible at all times, because that's important. So Shannon, I'm gonna ask you to switch place with Kennedy, if you don't mind. And Kennedy has a different type of life jacket on. So Officer Weber, could you explain what Kennedy's wearing? So Kennedy has a automatic inflate life jacket, and it states it right here, automatic. So in the event that she fell overboard, and the life jacket was completely submerged, it would automatically inflate. But if it did not, it still has the pull cord that you would pull and it would inflate the life jacket. Okay, great. And sometimes these life jackets come with other accessories, correct? Yeah, some of them uh, will have a whistle inside and then also a, a straw that you can manually inflate if you were to lose pressure on your life jacket. So it's important when you're shopping for life jackets that you take a look at what is offered with that life jacket package. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, if you have any questions, you should always ask where you're buying them from if this is a manual or automatic inflate life jacket. Great, and they should be able to explain that to you as well. So great tip, thank you. So when we were prepping today for today's Facebook Live, Kennedy actually had a great question. So Kennedy, I'm gonna put you on the spot and I think your question would be important for the viewers. So what is it? Yeah, you just mentioned that these were type five. So how many types of life jackets are there? So we have five types. Uh, type one is for commercial use. Type two is gonna be the ones that you see most commonly, you know, that are sold in packages that people will have on their boats. Uh, they're great for in the event of emergency, they have to be readily accessible. But also another thing that I'd like to point out when you're purchasing a life jacket, you should take a look at the information that's on it. It needs to be U.S. Coast Guard approved, and it needs to go by by the weight of who's going to be wearing it. So, also going into that, we have a Type 3, which you would wear, like when the jet skiers went by. It uh, typically will have a zip or snaps that will hold that life jacket on if they were to fall off. And a Type 4 is for, you know, if somebody falls overboard, you're able to throw that to them. It's not a wearable life jacket and is required by state law in any vessel over 16 feet in the state of Florida. And then a type fives, of course, are what we're wearing. 
all great information so people can find out information about that on our website and you can check with the store personnel wherever you're purchasing a life jacket so do your homework find out what best way works for you and remember there's lots of options out there for all different types of body types and sizes and certain requirements come into play with life jackets. So thank you so much. Exactly. And I'm gonna take a look over here and I'm gonna ask Officer Weber to actually captain the vessel for us. And I'm gonna ask Officer Harris to come to the front so we can talk about something else. And here in the distance is where we are at. And it is an iconic spot in the city of St. Augustine. And I'm gonna actually come on over to Officer Harris and tell us exactly where we're at. St. Augustine in front of the Castella de St. Marcus Fort. Great, and you're a officer that's assigned here in this area? Yes, ma'am, St. John's Flagler County. St. John's Flagler County. If you know anything about FWC, we have statewide law enforcement responsibilities and we have our officers stationed throughout the state. So you saw at the beginning of our forecast and I'll broadcast rather, not forecast. My apologies. The forecast is great actually out here today. So you saw at the beginning of our broadcast that we had some PWCs or jet skis that came. I was trying to see if I could see them in the distance. They're way far off. You probably can't see them, but I thought it was a great opportunity to actually talk a little bit about um, what is required when you're operating a PWC or a jet ski. So Officer Weber talked a little bit about the life jacket requirement, and that is um, what type again for a three. jet ski? Three, an impact vest. A type three impact vest. How important is fit of a life jacket? Very important. If it's too small, it'll come right off. Uh, or rather, if it's too big, it'll come right off of the person wearing it. Okay, so fit's important. And it's important that you have that zipper all the way up or those buckles fastened as well on those life jackets, correct? Absolutely. If you're going yeah. fast in the water and you hit, uh, water comes pretty hard at, at high speed. Okay, so all good tips. And you know, that's the part of law enforcement that you may not see often on events such as this, but it is the reality of law enforcement for our officers that they respond to many emergency situations on the waters and many of them have a life jacket factor involved. So when people are recreating for spring break, and as you can see, and there's some actual, looks like some in the distance, some, what are those called? Craig cats. Craig cats, which is a new term for me. So uh, there's something in the distance, but they likely rented those, I'm assuming so. And they rented them from a facility that we commonly refer to as a what? A livery. So when somebody hear, hears the word livery, what does that mean? It's going to be a business that is for hire that rents out to the public, whether it's a, a, a vessel being a jet ski or a power boat. Okay. So it rents out to the public, which is very, very popular, especially during spring break time of the year. We have people coming to Florida from all over the country and it's popular to get out on the water and they go to a livery. So if the general public was to go to a livery, what, what should they expect when they go to rent one of these? Well, outside of a livery, they should have placards posted with safety uh, briefings on them. Also, if the person needs to acquire one, they should be able to uh, do the test there to take a motor safety class. Um, they need to have pre-ride instruction from the person uh, that's renting it, as well as going through the vessel to see what safety equipment is on board and where it's located. Also, knowledge of the water as far as slow speed zones. And in St. Augustine, we have bridges in here. They're all instructed at 500 feet on either side of the bridges or slow speed. So area familiarity is equally important, important correct? Absolutely. So thank you for that. So when you go to a livery, folks, you're going to expect to see what Officer Harris just uh, advised on, which is safety information. You should have a safety inspection. These um, vessels are required to have certain safety gear on board. You can find out all of that information, but be sure you're educating yourself. And if you just don't know, it's the livery's responsibility to have that information for you. So ask the questions. We want you to be educated. We want you to have fun and get out on the, there on the water. So thank you so much, Officer Harris, for that great explanation. And I'm going to ask them to switch gears again with Officer Weber. And 
Officer Weber has a unique role in the agency. While he's coming up front, I'll share a little bit about what that role is. And he is what we call a public information officer. So he represents the Division of Law Enforcement in a certain area of the state. And he handles things like this, where we work together and we talk about some of our messaging. He also has the patrol responsibilities of an officer. And he also handles a lot of our media relations and outreach events in the region where he's assigned. So, Officer Weber, thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Appreciate it so very much. So, one of the other things that we like to talk about when you're out here, and if you can look at the water in the background, we've got some conditions going on. We've got some wind. I'm trying to hold the camera steady, just bear with me, but we've got some wind, um, and we've got some certainly vessel activity going on. So, in the event that I was maybe offshore and not so close to shore, or I just happen to have an, an emergency even this close to shore, there are things that you can buy and be prepared for so that emergency responders and first responders can actually locate you. So I'd like to talk a, bit, a little bit about what an EPIRB is, or we call them EPIRBs. E so there's one so right down here. We have one on our vessel, and obviously, if you looked out to the, the inlet, it's pretty, uh, pretty rough today. But in the event of an emergency, your boat starts to capsize or is sinking, you can activate this. The EPIRB is an electronic position, positional indicating radio beacon. So that would uh, send your GPS coordinates to satellite. And then in the event of an emergency, we're able to uh, to locate you. We get an exact location of where you're at and we can respond to that. Uh, segwaying away from that, you can also purchase an ELB, which is an emergency location beacon for your, your life jacket. You put this on and then you activate it. If you were to go overboard or you're away from your vessel, there's a little antenna that comes up. This floats, both of them are waterproof and it'll send your, your location real time to satellite to US Coast Guard, uh, FWC. We're able to locate you in the event of an emergency and respond a lot quicker. And just so you know, folks, it's great to have these on board your vessel and the event that you have an emergency situation, you capsize, Keep in mind that the one on the boat is important, but the one on your person is equally important because in conditions such like this or current situations, you could get separated from the vessel. So having that personal locator beacon or the PLB that you wear on your person is equally important. Yes, absolutely. And it, it cuts down the search time quite significantly if we're able to locate you and get you back safely to your family. Absolutely, which is always our number one goal. Get there as quick as we can, provide that emergency response and emergency services, and reunite you with your family. Well, thank you so much for those important tips. So, Shannon, I'm going to ask you to come to the front, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some things with the agency. If you're just joining us today, we're in beautiful Northeast Florida. We are in St. Augustine. Um, Captain uh, Officer Harris, remind me the name of the inlet that's in my distance here. St. Augustine Inlet. So we are in the St. Augustine Inlet, and Officer Harris, being a local officer, actually shared some really great, interesting history information about this inlet and where it used to be versus where it's at now. So if you're a history buff, come on out to St. Augustine and learn about some of the unique dynamics of this particular location and how it's set up. And inlets, if you don't know, inlets are waterways that are developed to provide access to offshore locations, whether it be boating or fishing, recreation, sailing, all of the above and more. And coming in our distance, just because this was something I learned new today, what are these called again? A Craig Cat. So, Officer Weber, come up here and tell me what a Craig Cat is because, listen, I just, I've never seen one of these before. So, a Craig Cat is essentially, it's like a miniature pontoon. If you look at it, it has two plastic uh, pontoons. And they're typically powered by uh, a 9.9 .9 outboard, and it's a stick steer. And these are really popular with uh, rental facilities. And they, they do a lot of guided tours. You'll be the, the person in front that'll have a radio doing a tour with you know, all the people that are behind. So uh, they're quite popular throughout Central Florida. Uh, that's about it. I mean, they're, they're, they're neat, little, uh, neat little machines that get people out on the water. 
yeah thank you for the explanation and like I said I learned something new today they look like something fun that I would want to give a try to so again we're all about getting you out there on the water making sure you're safe giving you the information the education that you need which brings me right to Shannon hi Shannon hi so before I ask you some of my questions tell people what you do well, I'm the Public Information Coordinator for the Division of Law Enforcement, so I work with our PIOs like Chad throughout the state, um, as well as our regional PICs, our regional Public Information Coordinators. So we all work together um, with pushing out messaging uh, for the agency, for our divisions, because we have six divisions within uh, FWC, so Division of Law Enforcement is just one of six. And so we work together on all things communications, um, including working with members of the media and press releases, social media posts such as this one, um, just to get that important messaging out there uh, to the public. And today is all about boating safety, since we are obviously out enjoying the weather, just like all of the spring breakers. And before you know it, the summer will be here. So it's really, really important that everybody knows what to do um, and how to be safe when they're out on the water enjoying Florida's beautiful waterways. That's great, Shannon. And so there's a whole team of us that all work together, like Shannon said. And I just, interesting, when I came in close to talk to you, it doesn't look like you're wearing a life jacket. But I, I want to remind folks that Shannon's got one of these great fanny pack design life jackets we're ready to go at FWC. We we practice what we preach in essence and we promote boating safety and we wear our life jackets when we're underway on the vessel at all times. So Shannon, I've talked to Officer Weber, I've, sp I've spoken to Officer Harris and even Kennedy in the back who's helping us out today and learning some things about social media at FWC. So I've said a lot. Um, sometimes I say too much for people to necessarily capture when I'm saying it. So where can people go to find some of this information we've talked about? So we have a lot of information on our website. And if you go to myfwc.com forward slash boating, there you will find a lot of information regarding boating safety, um, our BUI messaging, because that's very, very important. Do not drink while driving on the water. We cannot stress that enough. Accidents happen within a matter of seconds, um, and you do not want to ruin your day on the water with drinking. Um, so our officers are always out, especially during um, spring break, Memorial Day weekend, Fourth of July weekend, those very busy weekends. They're always patrolling all the time, but especially during those very busy weekends, looking for uh, drivers that may be impaired from uh, drinking or drug-related um, things. So we just really want everybody to vote safely and not under the influence of either of those. So it's very, very important. Always a great message, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that too, but thank you for sharing that. So you can go to myfwc.com, boating, find out all your information. It's where you can find your boating regulations. Remember that for different type vessels, there are different regulations based on size limit, based on safety equipment that's required. All of that information is on our website and readily available. We also have an app called Fish Hunt Florida. You can download that free app that FWC offer, offers and it hooks you right up to our boating regulations, our hunting and fishing regulations. It's got sunrise and sunset times on it um, and some ID for certain species. So yes, we try really hard at FWC and I think we do an excellent job at providing the information that people need to do to be recreating outdoors safely. So thanks so much, Shannon. I appreciate that. And just to recap on Shannon's role, when we prepare for events like this, part of Shannon's role is to get us ready. So she does an excellent job at determining what we need to talk about and what the public needs to know. So another person out recreating on the beautiful waters of the state. gonna let them pass they're enjoying some great music it sounds like and again it's a beautiful beautiful day here in northeast florida city of st augustine so as we're driving around this little area here and this is a whole is this referred to what type of waterway is this referred to as the icw or correct me 
Okay, so this is the Intercoastal Waterway, and I had to ask because I'm not from this area. So one of the great things about my job is I get to travel around the state at certain times and learn new areas that officers spend lifetimes getting. So I get the, I get the quick tour, but it's always great because I get to hear all the great things about the areas that we're in. So in the Intercoastal Waterway, um, one of the things that officers run into all the time is uh, debris. And oftentimes that can come off a boat, so it could be a life jacket that wasn't secured, it could be a hat, it could be maybe, you know, a water bottle. Um, something that you have not secured on your vessel that goes... Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, they were pointing something out to me. Uh, anyways, so officers oftentimes will pick up debris. And earlier today, we happened to find something, so... What have we got there? Uh, a vodka bottle that, you know, we see these things floating and we try to pick up our, uh, clean up our waterways while we're on patrol as well. We, uh, obviously that's kind of a two part, uh, with boating under the influence of alcohol. So if you are above the legal limit of 0.08, we have a zero tolerance for boating under the influence of alcohol. But also when you're bringing things out on the water, whether it's snacks, drinks, make sure all that stuff goes home with you because we do have marine life. Even in our uh, freshwater areas, we have marine life that can ingest these things or it just creates a, a hazard for for everybody. I mean, glass bottles that break, somebody can step on it. So when you're bringing this stuff out on the water, by all means, come out and have a good time on the water in the state of Florida, but take home your trash and stash it while you're on the water and make sure it gets into a proper receptacle. Great tips. And from a safety standpoint, sometimes debris that's not secured can be a safety issue as well, right? Absolutely. I mean, bigger things that, you know, that can fall off your boat. I mean, these can become obstructions in the water, underwater obstructions that somebody else could hit. You know, somebody that's water skiing or jets on a jet ski. So just make sure you secure all your trash and make sure it goes home with you and gets thrown away properly. So thank you for that. And it's important. It's just one of those extra things that we do and our part to really just be out here and conserving what these guys work so very hard to protect, as well as the ladies on the boat with the work that they do behind the scenes. So you actually made me think of one other thing that I think I'll use to just wrap up. And you talked about marine life in the water and obstructions in the water that can happen when we lose when we don't properly secure things. So I noticed you're wearing a certain type of glasses. What kind are they? Polarized. Right, polarized, not the brand. We're, yeah. we're going for polarized. Yeah, polarized glasses. Polarized um, glasses, and what do those help with? They, they take the glare off the water when you're operating a, a vessel that way. I mean, you're not gonna be able to see all the way in the water, but you can see shadows and things like that. So if you get yourself a nice pair of polarized glasses, uh, it'll, and always keeping your head on a, swivel while you're out here, 360 scan, but polarized glasses cut down on glare and help you see underwater obstructions. Yep. Always a great tip. I'm a big fan of polarized sunglasses. They're the type of glasses to have out here on the water. So Shannon, I'm going to ask you to come to the front one more time. We're going to let Shannon wrap it up for us today. Get into the sunlight so I can see you better. So Shannon, again, where can people go to find out everything we talked about today? Well, you could go to our website, myfwc.com forward slash boating to get all of the boating safety tips that we have discussed in today's broadcast. And you can also follow us on social media, right, right, Shannon? Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Three platforms that we would all love for you to join us on and get more safety tips as we move into the summer. Great, Shannon. And with that, folks, it's a wrap. I'm going to give you one more look at the beautiful day we are out here and lucky to be experiencing. We can't wait for you to get out there on the water. Lots of different options. If you don't own a boat, meet a friend, rent a, rent a boat at a livery. Be safe out there. Have a great time. Thank you so much for joining us today.